Okay, uh, last time we talked about uh, the gene regulations on uh, prokaryotic cells, and then I started on eukaryotic cells, and then uh, uh, before this, before we get to the organization of typical e eukaryotic gene, uh, this is a typical organization of eukaryotic gene. Uh, the, what I talked so far was this portion. I have not talked about this one. That's the difference between this slide and the previous slides. So this portion that I have not talked about, there are a couple of things in here we should know, and the next few slides are going to uh, pretend to that one, is the enhancer is a group of distal control uh, elements. And I hope you know what these two slash lines like that means. It means there is a distance of, a good distance of DNA between this one and the, uh, uh, the uh, opron right here, okay? So we call this an opron, the promoter, the uh, uh, everything else, uh, the controller, everything else. But anyhow, there is a segment in eukaryotic cells, there is a segment right here that controls uh, the opron as well. So, but this, they call it upstream here. And the one that is distance away, they call it distal control. And the proximal con element control is close to your promoter, close to the rest of it. That's what the distal and proximal means. Distal, it means distance away. And that's these two dashed lines means that there is a good distance of DNA. It's not this close on this diagram, they cannot show it. It would be very long. So there is a good that to, to that. You, you, I hope you all know what I'm talking about. This two dashed line. It means a good distance of DNA between them. Then what happens? And the rest is same. You have your exon and introns, and then your cap, and your cap here, and poly A here at the end after uh, coding. So let's go ahead and talk about this right here a little bit. And of course, that would be RNA processing part of the RNA processing. A DNA enhancer, that would be your distal control element. A DNA enhancer, that's what they call it. They do not have a name, at least I do not have a name for, um, I, I do not have a name for proximal control elements. For proximal control elements, I do not have a name, but for the distal one, uh, it's called uh, enhancer, okay? That's why I bolded for you guys, right here. I bolded. I enlarge it that you'll be familiar with that term, enhancer. It means it's a distal control element, and I showed it to you. And this is the proximal uh, control element. Then what you have, what happens, of course, the exons and uh, introns are made, and so on and so forth. Am I stuck? No, that's not going to go anywhere. Right, oh, we have a video, and that video says a few things. The lifespan of mRNA molecules helps determine how much of a protein is oh, made. Okay. Nucleotide sequences that affect mRNA longevity are often found in the three prime untranslated region following the stop codon. Enzymes attack the poly A tail first and eventually the rest of the mRNA. Depending on its ability to resist this degradation, a eukaryotic mRNA molecule may last from hours to weeks. The longer an mRNA lasts, the more protein is made. Okay, so the next thing, uh, the next um, segment that we are in this chapter, they're talking about, they're talking about how long an mRNA stays inside of a cell. The longer mRNA stays inside of the cell, the more protein is going to be synthesized. The shorter that it's going to be degraded. It has to be degraded by other elements that you saw in here. So that's the next few slides are going to be the, uh, the rules of transcription factors to initiate transcription, eukaryotic RNA polymerase requires the assistance of transcription factors, and I will show you a picture of that. General transcription factors are essential for transcription of all proteins called on genes. In eukaryotic, high levels of transcription for, uh, of uh, particular genes depends on control elements interacting with specific trans, uh, transcription factors. 
enhancers and specific transcription factors, proximal control elements are located close to the promoter. That's what I said uh, in that those diagrams, and the distal one is called enhance. Okay. Uh, right here, this is a protein, and we call it the domain. This is a protein molecule right here. All of this is a protein molecule. This is DNA. Okay. Now, uh, you remember from the beginning of semester, I talked about uh, primary, uh, secondary, and tertiary, alpha, and beta. So this would be your um, beta one, right? The twisted one, uh, the alpha one, I'm sorry, this is the alpha one. The beta one is the pleated one, protein molecules. The alpha is twisted, and beta was pleated. Um, so we talked about that. But those are protein molecules, and they call them activated protein molecules. What does that mean? activator protein molecules. Okay, in here you have two of them. <coughs> this one, there are two different ones, but a portion of this that attaches to DNA and a portion of that one that attaches to DNA, that portion is called DNA binding domain. The ones that are not attached to DNA, this portion is called activation domain. And what does that mean? Activation domain, it means it gets the DNA ready for transcription. That's what it means. The activation domain, it gets the DNA, it gets the DNA right here, it gets the DNA ready for transcription. And that's what it means. Two activated, of course, this, you need that one, and also you need that one. This is the, you see, this is the elon, this is the continuation. This is the continuation of the purple one, and this is the continuation of the orange one, okay? But a portion of the orange uh, domain attaches to uh, DNA, and a portion of, uh, of course, the purple one attached to DNA, and the other ones are out of DNA, and it gets the DNA ready for transcription. And you know what transcription is, DNA. Based on DNA, RNA is synthesized, okay? So promote transcription, right here. That's what I wrote it down. Two activators, two activate, activators, proteins to promote. Okay, an activator is a protein that binds to an enhancer. Remember enhancer I just gave you uh, in a distal uh, portion of the DNA. That's what happens. It attaches to the enhancer and it stimulates transcription of a gene. Activators, these are activators, Activators have two domains, two domains, okay? So activators have two domains, one that binds DNA and the second one activates transcription. Okay, so we need to talk about that. Bound activators facilitate a sequence of protein-protein interactions that results in transcription of a given gene. Right here, so this is your uh, enhancer away from the, uh, uh, the actual um, gene. So this is your enhancer. And then what happens, these, these are all the group of mediated protein molecules and general transcription factors. These are all protein molecules. These are all protein molecules. And, what call, and there is a DNA binding. In a video you are gonna see here in a minute, uh, it will not talk about DNA binding protein. But there is a DNA binding protein. It attaches to your DNA and makes the DNA to flex, to come this way and attach, to the, these are the enhancers attached to these protein molecules, attached to all of the general transcription factors, group of mediators, they attach this, and then this will attach, this will come down here, then RNA polymerase attached to DNA and it starts the transcription. Okay, so the, that's what the function of enhancer are. The function of enhancer are a set of protein molecules attached to them, and then when they attach to them, it bends the DNA, it bends the DNA, and when the DNA bends, it will start doing the transcription. Okay, right here. So this is the video. This is the video that's going to explain this, but the only thing that's missing in this video is the DNA bending, DNA bending protein. Okay, that's what the next video is all about. Let's watch it. Most of the fine-tuning of gene expression occurs at the transcription level, making an RNA copy of a DNA sequence. Recall that to initiate transcription, an RNA polymerase must bind to the promoter region adjacent to a gene. 
This cannot occur without the help of specific protein transcription factors. Some transcription factors, called activators, bind to enhancer regions some distance from the gene. The DNA bends, bringing the activators closer to the gene, where the activators interact with other transcription factors and RNA polymerase to initiate transcription. Right. It's not talking about DNA bending protein. It's not talking about that one. But there is a protein molecules cause the DNA to bend, and I already talked about all of that, and then bends to this uh, area, and then of course the DNA RNA polymerase go ahead and starts making the MRNA. Okay, so. Uh, combinatorial uh, control of gene activation, a particular combination of control elements can activate transcription only when the appropriate activated proteins are present. Okay, um, this few, um, what that, what this PowerPoint says and the next few ones he says, I already talked about it a little bit, but this one, giving you all of the nuts and bolts, uh, what this one is saying that uh, the, the, the cells in your eyes make a protein molecule called crystalline. The cells in your liver makes a protein molecule called albumin. Albumin is responsible for the osmosis in your blood. You need it. And then crystalline is needed in your eye that you can uh, see. Okay, it's a protein molecule. So let's talk about them, uh, how they are different, how these two cells, liver cells, <coughs> lens cells. Okay, liver cells, lens cells, and they do, they have the same DNA. We talked about this, the, sam, the, the, the cells in your liver and the cells in your um, eye, your eye and your liver, they both have the same chromosome, same DNA, they are exactly same, except the shape of them, except the protein they make, but genetically, they are same, okay? So, let's look at it, how they make a, a different type of uh, protein molecule. Here it is. So you have specific transcription factors. The key thing is the difference between these two is specific transcription factors are made in particular cells. So this cell, liver cell, is making these transcription factors that are different than these transcription factors. When they are making these transcription factors, then the DNA bends, everything that we talked about attaches right here, those transcription factors. What? Okay. This one, that one, that one, that one. So it bends, and now this segment of DNA is going to be transcribed and, of course, later on transla uh, translated. However, in the lens cell, look at that one. It's attaching a different one, different than this one. Okay. And that one, uh, same as that one. Okay. And then this one is different than that one. So these are the transcription factors that are different in each cell as a result. Then a different gene is going to be transcribed and the protein molecule is going to be uh, synthesized based on that. They both, this one has the same gene as this one. This DNA has the same gene as this one, but this one transcribe that liver one transcribe for what is it liver one transcribe for albumin and then the lens one transcribe for crystal those are those are the differences okay so here it is dna in both cells contain the albumin gene and the crystalline gene and as i was taught, i talked about that both liver cells and eye cells have the same gene they both have the albumin and crystal, but the way those protein molecules, the, the, uh, the transcription factors, these are the transcription factors, makes a difference what protein molecules are going to be synthesized. Yes? So the liver cell transcribes albumin, but the liver cell transcribes the crystal? They both have the genes to make albumin. The, the cells in your eyes, the cells in your eyes have the gene to tra to make albumin, but they don't. But it's, it's blocked. It's turned off. How is it turned off by these protein molecules? They don't have these transcription specific transcription factors. 
They don't have it. I want to make you some sense a little bit. Okay, so that's what the right here liver cells. Look at the transcription factors. Some of them could be similar. If you look at the, uh, the lens cells, you will see that one and that one is the same, but these are not these uh, transcription factors. Okay, that they have the same thing here too, but the rest is different. So the albumin gene is not expressed. The albumin gene is not expressed, but the crystalline gene is expressed in the eye. This is the lens cell. Okay. Then uh, that's something else that makes the gene turn off. Again, remember, we're talking about the light is being turned off and on, right? These are different things that cause the light to be turned off or on. I hope I'm making some sense. Um, the, in alternative RNA splicing, different RNA molecules are produced from the same primary transcript uh, depending on which RNA segments are treated uh, as exons or introns. You already know about exons, introns, we already talked about that, but uh, if you have a gene like this, okay, one, two, three, four, five, and these are all of your um, exons, okay, these are exon, intron, 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 we are not, uh, uh, we are not concerned with introns, but we are worried about exons. So these are all of your exons, and then what will happen, this is your primary RNA transcripts, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Now, if protein molecule that one, two, three, five will give you is a different protein molecule that one, two, four, five will give you, okay? And that's what the last PowerPoint is saying. It's saying an alternative RNA splicing, different mRNA molecules are produced different mRNA molecules, different, oh, sorry, different mRNA molecules, different mRNA molecules are produced, on, different mRNA molecules are produced from the same primary transcript depending on which RNA segments are treated as exons and, and, and which one as an intron. For example, this is the primary RNA molecule, one, two, three, five are exons. Then on this one, four is an intron. In this case, one, two, four, five are exon. Then three is an intron. So this one is giving you a different protein molecule. This is a troponin. Let's say this gives you um, alpha troponin, and this will give you beta troponin. Hope I'm making some sense. And then it depends on the cell, what does the cell need. So that was an RNA processing. And RNA processing, one more video. Some of these videos are helpful. A cell can rapidly adjust to environmental changes by regulating several processes that happen after transcription. In RNA processing, a cap and tail are added, introns removed, and the remaining exons spliced together. Alternative splicing of RNA may create different mRNA molecules from the same primary RNA transcript. That's it. From same, what he meant, from, <clears throat> from same primary RNA molecule, different RNA can be synthesized. And then each one of these RNA molecules, mRNA molecules, will give you a different protein molecule, which you already know. Okay, uh, initiation of translation and mRNA degradation. Uh, the lifespan of mRNA, we already talked about that, in a cytoplasm is a, key, is a key to determining protein synthesis. So the longer it stays inside of the cell, mRNA, the longer it stays inside of the cell, more protein molecules are gonna be synthesized. The shorter, of course, the shorter. If you're comparing eukaryotic cells with prokaryotic cells, eukaryotic cells, the cells that have nucleus, usually the mRNA stays in there longer. In prokaryotic cells, the MR, their RNA usually are uh, uh, degraded sooner. 
that's the difference between your uh, uh, eukaryotic and uh, prokaryotic. Nucleotide sequences that influence the lifespan of mRNA in eukaryote resides in the un, uh, untranslated UTR. In next few uh, slides, you are going to see this often. So it means untranslated uh, regions at three prime end of the molecule. So nucleotides influences the lifespan of mRNAs that depends on this one. I already talked about these two terms, ubiquitin and uh, proteosomes. So after translation, various types of protein processing and degradation. After translation, various types of uh, protein processing, including cleavage and addition of chemical groups are subject to control. The length of time each protein function is regulated by selective degradation. Uh, cells mark proteins for degradations by attaching ubiquitin, which I already talked about that, a single um, a chain of polypeptide to them. And then the big protein molecules, proteosomes, who will come and degrade the, uh, right here, you've already seen this video, but. Um, a cell can get rid of abnormal or damaged proteins and limit the lifetime of functional proteins by means of selective degradation. The cell marks the protein for destruction by attaching small ubiquitin proteins. Giant protein complexes called proteasomes recognize ubiquitin and break down the tag protein. And then pieces and bits comes out of uh, proteasomes. You saw at the end, so at the end, uh, uh, proteasomes comes out. Non-coding RNA play multiple uh, roles in controlling gene expression. Only a small function, uh, fraction of DNA codes from good things. So all of the DNA, all of the chromosomes inside of your body, all of the genes you have inside of your body, only a small fraction of them are responsible for the proteins that are being made. A big portion of it is uh, just there for, they call them non-coding. They're called non-protein coding DNA. A big portion of it. Very small of the non-protein DNA consists of genes for RNA, such as rRNA and tRNA. A significant amount of, I bolded for these you guys, I hope you got my internet, I said the uh, uh, chapter 18, uh, the ones, these are, I bold them for you. So what are some of the uh, write-ups, significance are here. Um, significant amount of genome may be transcribed into non-coding <coughs> RNAs, which we call it NCRNAs, non-coding RNA. Non-coding RNAs regulates gene expression at two points, mRNA translation and chromatin uh, configurations. Okay, effects of mRNA by micro mRNAs and small interfering RNAs. Micro RNAs, MI, they call it MI RNAs, uh, are small uh, single-stranded RNA molecules that can bind to mRNA. These can degrade mRNA or block its translation. So uh, micro mRNA is another factor can turn off, is that right? It can turn off, there are different things. It's just like my, I come turn off the light or Reno comes turn off the light. I don't know, the next person, another faculty comes and turn off the light. So there are different ways of turning off uh, a gene. And one of them is by micro RNA. It is estimated that uh, expression of at least half of the human gene is maybe uh, regulated by uh, micro RNA. Okay. Here it is, an example of it. This is a protein molecule. The blue is a protein molecule. This is a micro RNA. Two possibilities, the two ways. One way is that attaches, the, uh, the micro RNA attaches to the RNA and degrade it, break it down to pieces. The other possibility is attached to it and does not allow and, and, and this does not allow this mRNA that goes through the um, uh, ribosomes. This is the ribosome. So there are two ways: either the micro RNA attached to the mRNA and breaks it down, or attached to it and does not let it go through the ribosome. Those are two ways that micro RNA act. Okay, we're talking about microRNA degradation. Small, another set of uh, RNA we have beside microRNA is called small interfering RNAs, SI RNAs, small, small interfering, SI, 
are similar to mRNA in size and function. Okay, so they are called smaller. Uh, the blocking of genes expression by SI RNA is called RNA interference. Uh, you're is redundant, but anyhow, uh, RI, RNA interference is used by laboratory as a means of disabling genes to investigate uh, their function. Chromatin remodeling by uh, non-coding NC stands for non-coding RNA. You all know why I already talked about non-coding RNA means. Okay, some non-coding RNA NC RNAs act to bring about remodeling of chromatin structures. In some yeasts, they've done this research in small interfering, small interfering RNAs reform heterochrome heterochromatin and centromeres after chromosomes replications. Heterochromatin, as you know, I'm giving you the definition of what is a heterochromatome, I already talked about that. That's where the area of DNA chromosome is very condensed, so it cannot get transcribed or translated. So this is another way to turn off the gene. Okay, you turn it off by making the DNA to be condensed, very condensed, and making it heterochromatin. Then here is a, uh, a centromere where the two sister chromatids are attached right here. There's a gap between that sister chromatid and that sister chromatid, but here they are attached, it's called centromere. And the next few slides, it will talk about how small interfering uh, RNA, small interfering RNA, the next two, three slides right here, it causes that the DNA to be condensed at centromere. Okay, I'm not going to go through details of it. Whatever your textbook label, it's a very outline, very simple, but uh, there is more detail of even what your textbook talks about it. But right here, as your small RNA create this condensing, make the protein, make the uh, DNA molecule to be consent, uh, condensed. And that's what it is. That's one of the examples that your textbook is giving you an example of what is the uh, small RNA, interfering RNA, what is an example of it? Where? Where? It's right here. It creates a condensation here. So all of the genes in here will not be expressed. Will not have, make a protein molecule, will not be transcribed and will not be translated because it's so condensed. The DNA is so condensed. Okay, it's the best analogy I have, you might think, I mean, how is that? The best analogy I have, if there are so many cars in the traffic, how many people can get out and go do their business? It's just, you're, you're trapped in a condensation. You're condensed, so you cannot get out and go to your work or do something. But the DNA is right here. They are living in, out in the country, so they can go ahead and raise their cow. Am I making some sense? The DNA right here are so condensed, they cannot do anything. Okay, so again, how does it happen? How does the DNA, the question is, how does DNA here get condensed is by your small interfering RNAs. Okay, let's go. The next one is, is that right? Yeah, okay. The next one is small uh, non-coding RNAs called PI associated RNAs, PI RNAs, indu uh, they are induced heterochromatomes. Okay, so there is another one besides small RNA, there is a PI RNA which is called PV RNA, uh, induced heterochromatum blocking the expression of uh, parasitic DNA okay. elements uh, in some known as transposons. Okay. So if you have DNA, let's talk about, forget about this for a second. Let's talk about transposons. What is transposons? Transposons are segment of DNA. Okay, there is a segment of DNA and this is the real DNA. Maybe I should draw it with a different color. Right here. This is a different color. And they, what they, you know, what these DNA, this is DNA, this is DNA, host DNA, your DNA. What happens, this DNA can come and insert itself right here. And when they insert themselves right here, then 
their cells, it's a parasite. That's what they call it. They're parasitic DNA. They go inside transposons. You know, other, a lot of people are doing research on them. They go in there and insert themselves into the host DNA. And when they do that, <coughs> then uh, the protein molecules that come out, the protein is a different protein molecule or as a defected protein molecules. Okay, comes out of this transposon because it's not uh, the normal, regular uh, protein molecule that it's supposed to. So what happens, what, you talk, uh, what am I talking about? PI, PI RNA, PV RNA, they go ahead and block these transposons. Let's look at it. Small uh, non-coding RNA is called PV-associated RNA, PI RNA, induced heterochromatin uh, blocking the expression of parasitic uh, DNA elements in genome known as transposons. I gave you the definition of transposons, a segment of DNA that is capable of inserting copies of itself into other DNA sites, same as cells. RNA-based regulation of chromatin structure is the, uh, likely to play an important role in gene regulations. SI, this is talking about evolution, how the, uh, which one came first, and second, and third. Uh, the SI, RNA may have evolved first, followed by MI, microRNA, and then finally uh, PV, uh, RNA. PV, RNA probably evolved the latest because of the transposons uh, came uh, a little bit later, and that's why possibly that's what you're thinking. Uh, they came first, uh, last. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, I talked about all of this. Yes, I talked about that. Great. A program of different gene uh, expression leads to different cell types in a multicellular organism. During embryonic development, a fertilized egg gives rise to many different cells. Uh, cells, uh, cell types are organized uh, succe uh, successively into tissues, organs, or uh, organelles, uh, organ system, so on and so forth. You remember this? I hope you remember this model uh, from a long time ago. Uh, it's going to be here in this exam. You have an A. Oh, well, which one is coming off? Oh, they all come off. Okay, great. So you have an egg right here. This is an egg, fertilized egg. Sperm is entering it, fertilizing it, and that's what the next thing. This one fertilized egg, some of the cells become eye. That you saw in previous slides, the cells of the eye is different than the cells of your liver. The cells of your muscles are long. The cells, your white blood cells are round. Nice and round. Am I making some sense a little bit? So, how do they differentiate? How this eventually, they, they, it all came from one cell. How some of the cells become long, like this, and how some cells become round. Okay, and they all have the same gene. They all have the same gene. Good morning. We just started. Okay, <coughs> we all have the same gene. But some cells become long, some cells become round. And then the question is how? That's the question. So, uh, cell types are organized successively into tissues. We all know what tissues it means. Combination of cells makes up tissues. Combination of tissues make up organs. Combination of organs make systems. And combination of systems makes you, the whole entire organism. Gene expression orchestrate the development of a, uh, a program as of animals. The a genetic program for embryonic development a transformation from cycle to adult uh, results from cell division, which you know, it's mitosis. This has to go under mitosis to become two cells. You remember this? Become one cell, one fertilized egg becomes Two, this is called zygote, right? You remember that? It becomes two cells. Two cells become four cells. 
four cells become eight cells, eight cells become 16, 32, so on and so forth. So, mitosis. And then cell differentiation occurs. Sooner or later, some of these cells, sooner or later, some of these cells differentiate and become eye cells. Some of them become muscle cells. Some of them become bone cells. They have to go through differentiation. And this is the uh, a, a, a blastula, blastocyst in case of human, they call it blastocyst. And then morphogenesis, the shape. I already talked about that. Some of them have shape of muscle, some of them have shape of liver cells, so on and so forth. Here is a, uh, a frog egg fertilized. The frog egg becomes a tadpole, and of course the tadpole becomes a frog. So cell differentiation is the process by which cells become specialized in structure and function. Uh, that is a very important issue when you take embryology or uh, you take zoology or botany. They talk about cell differentiation. Okay, uh, that is an important issue. But anyhow, hopefully we tackle it here a little bit. How cells uh, became. Good morning. Let me just talk a bit. Uh, how cells become uh, uh, different. So the physical process that give uh, an organism its shape constitute uh, morphogenesis. Right? Morphogenesis means shape, okay. Uh, differential gene expression results from genes uh, uh, being regulated differently in each uh, cell type. Materials in egg uh, sets up uh, gene regulation that is carried out as a cell uh, divides. Here I have a frog cell. It has different protein molecules, A, B, C. Here is a human cell has X, Y, Z. Okay, we're talking about X cells and uh, uh, frog cells. They both could be round. Frog cell is round, human cell is round. Don't, don't let my shape fool you. But the protein molecules inside a frog cell is different than the protein molecules inside of uh, human cells. And that's what that sentence means. Cytoplasmic determinants and uh, inductive uh, signals. Uh, and eggs, cytoplasm contains RNA, proteins, and other substances that are distributed unevenly in a fertilized egg. And I'll show you a picture. I'm not going to draw it. I was going to draw it on the whiteboard, but a picture will show you uh, what I mean. Cytoplasmic determinants are uh, maternal substances in the egg that maternal means what? Somebody define the term maternal means to me. Mother. Yeah. Like mitochondria, your mitochondria is maternal. Okay. So cytoplasmic determinants are maternal substances in the egg that influences early development. As the zygote divides by mitosis, cell contains uh, different cytoplasmic determinants, uh, which leads into different gene expression. Here we go. I gave you this is not in the most recent one. I just thought might as well I put it uh, last night. The other important sources of development information is the environment around the cell, especially signals from nearby embryonic cells. Uh, incubation temperature, I said environment, your textbook does not talk about this. The, in, the turtles and alligators and crocodile, the environment determines the sex of the, uh, the baby in those animals. So if the environment, low temperature, makes it male. In case of turtles, high temperature makes it female. Okay, in case of alligators, it's exactly opposite. Low temperature makes it female, and high temperature makes it male. Okay, so uh, your textbook uh, does not give you uh, an environment, environment, environment uh, examples. It gives you example environment that the cells nearby. What does the cell nearby would do? Okay, in a process called induction, uh, single molecules from embryonic cells cause uh, transcriptional changes in nearby target cells. Thus, interactions between the cells induce different uh, differentiation of special cells, right here. So, if you look at it, at this end of the cell, it is it makes a big difference. You might think, oh, it does not make that much of a difference. It does make a big difference. At this end of the cell, there is more 
green triangle than this end of the cell. At this end of the cell, this is the nucleus. At this end of the cell, there is more round uh, gold molecules. There are two different molecules, but one end of the cell have more of this one, and one of the cell has the other one. And that makes a difference. <coughs> and that's what I wrote in the, uh, I'm not gonna go back and read it, but that's what it means. Now, when the sperm comes inside of the egg, then possibly one cell, mitosis, one cell has most of the triangular ones and one cell has most of the round ones. How am I making some sense? Of course, this makes a difference as the neighboring cells. This cell is releasing the molecules to, to the neighboring cells, which is called induction. This cell releases the circle molecules to the next cells, and of course the next cells wants to have to have the receptors. We talked about all of these at the beginning of semester. And then this cells will the genes are turned on, and when the genes are turned on, then different uh, different it differentiates the different type of cells. I'm talking about the bottom line is guys, I'm talking about differentiation. How cells, how this one cell how this one cell become eye cells and how this cell becomes liver cells, right here, okay, by this, they call it induction, okay, Reno, right here, sperm and egg, all of those pictures that I talked about, it goes over a little more details, and then uh, right here, the cells are inducing induction occurring to the next cells, and next cells differentiates. Uh, this is just a ball of cells, and all of the cells are similar. No differentiation occurred yet. But over next generation of the cells, next generation of the cells, next generation of the cells, some of these cells become, as I said, your bone cells, some of them become your eye cells, some of them become your muscle cells, and uh, so on and so forth. Here we go, let's talk about, uh, you've seen this, uh, I think this was exam number two, You've seen it, but let's hit it one more time. Cell-to-cell -cell signaling with molecules carrying signals from sending cells to receiving or target cells is a key mechanism in the coordination of cellular activities. In most cases, a signal molecule acts by binding to a receptor protein in the plasma membrane of the target cell and activating a series of changes, a signal transduction pathway that triggers a specific response within the cell. A signal molecule binds to a specific receptor in the plasma membrane of the target cell. This activates a series of relay proteins, which in turn activates a transcription factor. The activated transcription factor attaches to the DNA and triggers transcription of a specific gene. The mRNA message is translated into a new protein, which changes the structure or function of the receiving cell. Bottom line, uh, you already, uh, some of this, like G protein, you remember that? We talked about this at the beginning of semester. Um, and then, of course, these are the new, uh, what happened here, the transcription factor went to the RNA and uh, created that one. So we talked about that. Sequential regulations of gene expression during cellular differentiations, determinations, it means when a cell commit itself to uh, whatever it is, it's not going to go back to other cells. It's called the determination. Irrever irreversibly uh, commits to a cell its uh, final fate. Determination precedes differentiation. Okay, so we have determination and we have differentiation. And determination is the final product. Cell differentiation is marked by the uh, production of tissue specific uh, proteins. Uh, he's giving you an example of a myoD and uh, myoD protein molecules and then what happens to them. Myoblasts are uh, the cells uh, determined to uh, uh, produce muscle cells and begin producing muscle specific proteins. MyoD is a master regulatory gene encodes a transcription factor that commits uh, the cell to becoming skeletal muscles. The myoD proteins can turn some kind of differentiated cells. Um, fat cells and liver cells into muscle cells. Right here, it's an embryonic uh, precursor cells, that's a nucleus, 
Yeah, here is a master regulatory gene for myo D, so it determines if it's going to become a muscle cells or not. Uh, other uh, muscle specific genes are off, other are off. Then myoblast determine uh, mRNA, myo D protein transcribed factors, and these are off. But the muscle cells, the uh, part of the uh, muscle fibers, these are the proteins, molecules that they turn on myo D, and eventually these cells, the precursor cells, these are the precursor cells, become muscle cells. I hope I'm making some sense. Uh, these two precursor cells, uh, Brian is not here to ask me, Amir, what is a precursor cells? These are, this is the final product, this is determ determination. These are differentiation, okay? So these are the precursor cells to the muscle cells. Here, they are turned off, the genes are turned off, <coughs> but here, the genes are turned on and eventually become a muscle cell. I hope you guys can. Uh, you can see that. You're all fixed up. Okay, pattern formation, setting up the body plan, uh, this is important. They have done a lot of research in the 1930s regarding this, and then uh, I'd like to spend some time on it. Uh, maybe another five minutes will go. Uh, patent formation is the development of a special uh, spatial organization of tissues and organs. In animals, pattern uh, formation begins with establishment of the major axis. Uh, positional information. The molecular cues that control pattern uh, formation uh, tells the cell location relative to the body axis and the neighboring cells. Drosophila is the fruit fly. Uh, cytoplasmic determinants in the uh, unfertilized egg determines the axis before uh, fertilization. After fertilization, the embryo develops into segmented larva with three larval stages. Right here, if you would, uh, development of egg within ovarian follicle. This is the egg that is found. They find it in the um, ovary of the fruit fly. That's what it looks like. It has a, uh, the egg and it has a nucleus. These are follicle cells. These are nurse cells that provide yolk nutrient for uh, the egg. Then eventually the yolk increases. That's the nucleus. And then you have the, uh, depleted nerve cells. The nerve cells uh, go to one corner and they're very small. And eventually the nerve cells disappear. All you have is the fertilized egg after the sperm goes inside of it. Then you have this, em the fertilized egg becomes embryo development. And there are three regions. That's what the last overhead said. This is one region, this is one region, this is one region. This region becomes the abdomen of the animal. This region becomes thorax, and this region becomes head. Head, thorax, and abdomen. Those are the three regions of the animals. And then how does that differentiation, this is all one cell. This is all, eventually, this is all, um, this is all. How does group of cells become head? How some of them becomes thorax? and how some of them become happen. Okay, that's the question they asked back in the uh, 1930s. So what they came up with, genetic analysis of early development scientific inquiry by Edward Lewis uh, and Christian uh, Nusswin uh, Bohart and Eric uh, uh, Weisschus, uh, won a Nobel Prize in 1995 uh, 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 for decoding pattern formation in Drosophila. And then a homeotic uh, uh, gene is a gene that controls pattern from late embryo, larva, and adult stage. I give you the definition. Another definition of homeotic gene are genes. Uh, I put it in red. It means it's important. Right? And any time I put it in bold, it's important. Are genes that tell where the body plans goes, such as legs, arms, and head. 